so dear friends this video is going to be a eh, i know you already know guys story time yes today's video is going to be a very very beautiful online dating success love story that is going to inspire you that is going to raise your faith and make you emotional why am i saying it's gonna make you emotional it's because the challenges that this lady went through before finding the one maybe you are going through them right now and you're at the point tell yourself that it's not gonna work for me maybe this is the end <laughs> yes so that is why i'm telling you after hearing this whole success story you will get emotional but not only that guys you can't just watch this story without laughing you're going to laugh a lot it's gonna be very very interesting guys plus shared with you the dating apps that she tried before she found the one also the dating app where she found the one so dear beautiful ladies for you to know the name of the dating app where she found the one you need to watch this video till the end because my intention to sit here tell you the story is not for you to get only the names of the dating apps no guys because when you are on online dating apps you need tips and tricks which will help you get the right one and where do you find those tips and tricks in these stories <laughs> so please watch till the end get the tips and tricks then get the dating apps where she found the one and start searching that way is the right way and you will find the right man for you guys so friends before i start this story i would like to tell you how i got the story <laughs> if you thought that it's only bella who loves you who cares for you who wants you to find the right one then you are wrong i am not the only one guys you have got lots lots of people who really love you you ladies who are on online dating apps searching for love especially you who are interested in interracial dating interracial marriages you have got the support from men who are married to black women you have got the support of ladies who are married to white men so the lady who shared this story is one of my subscribers a very beautiful kind-hearted sister who reached out to me and was like bella i want to share my love story i found my husband on online dating apps and i know my story will encourage lots of ladies out there who want to find love guys so without wasting much of your time let us jump into this story because it's a long one <laughs> but a beautiful one okay nice we are going to zambia <laughs> yes this story will be about a zambian lady by the name of mwansa who found love at the age of 39 she was a single mother of two one is her son and the other one i'll tell you who she is <laughs> why she is a single mom of two so she found love on online dating apps with a german guy so dear friends her story starts a bit different because mwansa is the lady who always wanted to get married to a white man she had that dream from her childhood she used to see her friends who had fathers who are white guys and she was like when i grow up I will get married to a white guy and when she grew up guys had a friend who was married to a white guy in Norway and this friend told her that why can't you try on online dating apps you might find someone serious there and that is when Mwansa's journey of on online dating apps started it was the year 2004 so she tells us that she is an open-minded lady and when that friend recommended her to join online dating apps she was like why not i'm going to join and see so she had other friends too who were interested in getting married to white men so they started searching and it was kind of difficult for them guys and she says in those years having a computer or a laptop was a luxury <laughs> so she didn't have a computer she didn't have a laptop so she used to search for white men when she goes to office she could ask an it lady with a computer and then start searching the it lady could understand her because she was also searching 
for the white man you know <laughs> also when she could not use the computer at office they used to go with her friends to the internet cafe pay and then start searching so they started searching for white men and she tells us she started chatting with different men from different countries she chatted with someone from denmark but in the end this person was not serious then again chatted with someone from sweden then this guy from sweden wanted to invite her but when she talked to him for more longer time she also came to find out he was not serious then she kind gave up and was like no i'm going to just stop this online dating thing and concentrate on my life because she was still young vibrant full of life guys wanted to enjoy her youth without you know worrying a lot about dating apps about white guys because also she got kind of discouraged from people at the office because she used to tell them everything <laughs> you know throwing shades at her so that too contributed her to give up plus she was young and also scared of the whole thing you know <laughs> of dating a white guy leaving her country go to another country because of her age but what i think too she was not all that that serious that i want a white guy you know <laughs> yeah so she left the dating apps and started living her life normally so after stopping to search for men on online dating apps one day she was at the dinner party that dinner was organized by the company where she was working from then met a guy from uk a white guy <laughs> that white guy was in zambia for work so they exchanged business cards and from there they started communicating eventually they started dating so friends in 2004 something happened which changed Mwansa's life forever something very very bad she lost her mother and her mother left a three years old daughter who was Mwansa's young sister so it was her responsibility to take care of that three years old younger sister so she took her younger sister started living with her taking care of her as her own daughter let's remember Mwansa is still single so time passed till 2008 so friends in 2008 Mwansa met a guy from Benin this guy was very educated well mannered a very cute guy successful he was loving he was so caring approached Mwansa told her I want to be in a relationship with you I'm so interested in you let's date and Mwansa was like but for me i'm so interested in white men i would like to get married to a white man but this white man is nowhere to be seen <laughs> i'm not finding any white man what should i do maybe i should just stop this thing of thinking of white men and try with this benin guy because <laughs> he has got everything that Mwansa wanted in a man apart from his black <laughs> So she was like color doesn't matter i'm going to date this guy so they started dating guys so when they started dating everything was going very well and this guy did not take so long told mwansa i would like to go see your father pay for the bride price and get married to you and that's how that guy did went and saw mwansa's father paid for the bride price and they got married guys you know when you pay for the bride price or they call it lobola <laughs> in some cultures it means that you are officially married you can go and start living with that man so after paying for the bride price they were officially traditionally married <laughs> husband and wife so guys after getting married they went to live together and you know as a married couple you have to enjoy the goodies <laughs> and the results guys she got pregnant that was 20 10. everything was fine life was good the husband was taking care of her Mwansa was working but apart from working she had her own side hustles so she was getting some income from it too so all was good until guys her third month of pregnancy something bad happened Mwansa lost her job and she tells us the reason why she lost her job is because the company she was working for it was running on low profit so they had to reduce some people and she was among of the people 
who were reduced from work so lost her job remember she's pregnant but she was not all that worried she was calm because she had a husband who was taking care of her and she was like i'm going to take care of my pregnancy and when i am done i will see what to do so friends in 2011 she gave birth to her cute son she was very very happy and the husband was still helping her was on her side though the husband was working in belgium at that time so he could go to zambia see the family and then return to belgium but she tells us that when the son was born after having the baby this guy changed a bit because he used even not to go that much often he became scarce at the time the baby was born that was 2011 till 2013 he had seen the son only three times and then problems arise guys the guy started accusing Wansa of things that she did not do they started fighting a lot and that same same year guys Mwansa's world was shattered because she lost dad became totally an orphan so guys you can imagine how Mwansa was in a difficult situation because the man that thought loved her, the man that thought they will grow old together, had turned his back on her, lost that. She tells us that their family was the family of love. They really gave her too much love. So losing both parents really made her so, so sad. She has a young sister to pay school fees. She has a son to take care of. It was very, very tough for her because she had lots of responsibilities but doesn't have a job. So friends, problems continued in Wansa's marriage to the extent they had to divorce. And when they divorced, this guy stopped completely to take care of Mwansa and the kid. Also, she tells us that before losing her job, she was studying Bachelor of International Relations and Diplomacy. So she was like, when I give birth, I will continue with my studies. But she couldn't do that. Pay school fees for the younger sister, so she had to also stop so friends she got her divorce and that was still 2013 she had a friend who was living in the netherlands married to a white guy told her monsa you had this dream of getting married to a white man why can't you try again the dating apps? Mwansa was like, no, my friend, I cannot go to the sites to search because I am done with men. I don't want anything to do with men because at that time she was still confused, frustrated, depressed due to everything that happened in her life. So guys, with this, I have a small tip to give you. If you're going through a lot in your life right now, I know it is life. You might see your situation is the worst, but trust me, it's not the worst. There are other people who are going through even more, more hardships than you. So don't choose to go to the dating apps when you are going through lots of problems you yourself you don't know what you want in life then join online dating apps of course you won't find anyone because a serious man will understand that your mind is not settled so it is not a good idea to join online dating apps and i agree with mwansa not to join online dating apps immediately after her divorce because she was still hurt she had a lot going on in her mind so friends Mwansa had to first heal from everything that happened and the following year which was 2014 she was ready to join on online dating apps and she was like i'm going to stick to my original plan of getting married to a white man i am ready to search you know with full energy <laughs> I'll do whatever it takes so that I can find the one. So after deciding that she wanted to go back to the dating apps, called her friend in the Netherlands, gave her the news that she was ready to start searching for her future white man who would be her husband. The friend was so happy, encouraged her, told her that I am here for you. I know internet can be a problem in Zambia. So sometimes when I'm free, I will help you 
to search too oh my god this is a friend to keep i tell you guys when you get a friend who will do anything for you so that you can be happy keep that friend please dear beautiful ladies <laughs> yeah because friends like that are very very rare so yes. Mwansa joined online dating apps and she told us that the first site that she joined was called Osis I'm going to write the name here I don't know if I'm pronouncing it well so she joined that dating app and immediately started chatting with men from all over the world she tells us that her first serious relationship was with a guy from Australia <laughs> an Australian guy this guy seemed very 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 good he had lots of promises could make her dream <laughs> the daydreaming guys I think you know them you know them scammers and players how they talk <laughs> how they'll make you dance with angels in heaven with their lies <laughs> so that was how this guy made Mwansa think they chatted for six months and after six months guys one day out of blue this guy sent his photo of his eggplant once i was so disappointed because she had lost much time with this guy and thought that he was the one but that one did not make her give up she kept on searching so after that australian guy she blocked him <laughs> kept on searching did not give up joined another dating app which is called afro romance so on afro romance met a guy by the name of sean he was from france i think so started chatting with her so guys after chatting for a while with this sean then sean was like i'm sending you a parcel she discovered immediately that that sean was a scammer so told sean please send that parcel to 419 <laughs> And she also came to discover that Sean was using a Ghanaian phone number. <laughs> but guys, after Sean, she did not give up, blocked him, took it easy, and kept on searching. So friends, that was her online dating life. Now let's go back to Mwansa's real life. How was she managing? Because she doesn't have a job, a husband left her, she's alone, she's supposed to pay for bando, you know, to chat with these guys. <laughs> How was she managing? So friends, after the divorce, she was alone and she had lots of responsibilities. Things were very, very hard, but she sweared to God that I am not going to sell my body so that I can take care of my son. No, I want to do that. I'll try my best to look for other ways so that I can take care of my son and my younger sister. So what she did, she started doing small business. And one of the business she told me, I actually had done that too <laughs> when I had lost my job. She started selling secondhand dresses. She tells us she didn't have money to buy balo you know they call them balo like all sell secondhand dresses no she had a phone number of a guy who was working in the market where they sell wholesale secondhand dresses so this guy could call Mwansa when they bring new dresses so that she can go and pick they call it salaula <laughs> If you're from Zambia, you're going to understand. And the market, she tells us, it was called Mandevu. Yes. So she could go pick and then wash these dresses, go sell them. I have told you that I had done this business. If you've been following me for so long, I think you can remember this story. I told you I used to sell secondhand dresses. But it's not that I had a shop. No, guys, I used to go to the streets and sell, you know, meet people, talk to them, sell dresses. So Mwansa did that too. And the other business she did, she used to sell rice from Tanzania. This rice is called Nakonde rice. If you're Zambian, <laughs> you're going to understand also. <laughs> you will know this rice called Nakonde rice. She tells us it is a very tasty, good smelling rice. So she did that business too. And another thing she did so that she can take care of her son and the younger sister, she also did cleaning jobs. And as I was talking to her, she told me, me, Bella imagine you are here she was working in the office a very good position here guys had a car had everything had a good apartment and then fell down 
like to zero start afresh people who knew her started laughing at her but she had good friends who used to help her you know with some money sometimes or buy clothes for the kids like that that was her life guys it was really really tough so friends with this i come again with an advice you are in africa you are in the caribbean i don't know in the philippines but right now we have got lots of responsibilities don't sit down and cry please dear beautiful ladies do something to change your life you have power in your hands don't be like i have studied i'm not finding a job i should just stay at home and continue crying or go to the sites and ask men money no you should stand up there is always a way there is always a way guys i asked mwansa to share with us the business she did so that you can get some business ideas start a small business which will help you by looking for other jobs while you are on online dating app searching yes dear beautiful ladies do not give up on yourself you can still survive try all ways where you can get some income don't worry of what people are going to talk about you as long as you're not doing something illegal then you're good to go so friends back to Mansa's online dating world <laughs> she was still on the dating apps and then came a guy from ireland he was an irish guy so started chatting with Mansa. this guy was so good talking to her very nicely praising her like a goddess but the problem is this guy was still living with the parents and he could take one glass of milk every night <laughs> so much was like no this must be a mama's boy i don't see future here <laughs> and i don't want to suffer someone in his 40s still living with the parents no 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 is enough for me this is not the life that i want after ending the relationship with that irish guy started chatting with another guy from the uk and after chatting for a while with this guy from uk once i asked him do you have skype so the guy was like no i don't have skype and this is for security reasons <laughs> but liar never accept such kind of a thing if you're going on online dating apps this is the same thing with guys who don't have photos on their profiles the dating sites themselves they are telling the guy put your photos they tell ladies put your photos to increase the chances of finding the one but a guy goes to the dating app and doesn't upload his photos what does that mean he is not serious so don't take these stupid excuses from the guys on online dating apps that i'm not uploading my photos because of my work or i can't give you my whatsapp number i don't use whatsapp because of security don't take that so that same same day that the guy said he doesn't have skype because of security reasons then he started bringing up talks of god <laughs> this guy was like have you gone to church then once i was like no i've not gone to church then the girl was like yeah you should go to church you know god is faithful you know talking of god god but in an african way you know us black black people or african people the way we talk of god it's kind of different with white guys once i was like no this guy can't be a white guy he is a scammer talking about god like that you know praise god god is good <laughs> <laughs> so in the end once i ended that relationship too <laughs> so guys after ending that relationship with that guy from the uk continued chatting with different men whenever they could exchange skype names these guys could come on skype with their naked chests <laughs> Or some of them could come with their eggplants. You know, once I got tired and talked to the friend in the Netherlands that, you know what, I think this does not work for me. I have failed my sister completely. <laughs> <laughs> i'm not going to get that white man that i want to marry me i think i should end this but the friend told her no don't give up don't quit yet 
keep searching we are supposed to start fasting we should choose the days to fast and pray about this but do not quit so encouraged her and stayed on the apps but that week she took a break so friends after that one week break Mwansa returned to the dating apps and she came with a new trick whereby every day she could view five men's profile she continued like that and then one day got a message from a german guy so when once i got this message she was like oh my god that uk scammer has returned do you remember that guy was talking of god 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 <laughs> so she thought that that guy had changed the name and the location <laughs> what she did after getting the message she ran so quick went to that guy's profile to see very well the photos and everything but to her surprise there was a photo of a white guy and this guy's description wasn't exaggerated it was so normal expressing himself and what he wants so went again read the message very well the message was so simple and decent telling her that he would like to know her better he is interested in her nothing i love you at all in his first message so guys after Mwansa reading the message she did not reply right away it took her some time before she replied but eventually she replied to this german guy his name is ian and he was in his 50s <laughs> so they started chatting introducing themselves Jan was like he was interested in women 45 years and up <laughs> but Mwansa was 39 but because as he was browsing through women's profiles he came across Mwansa's profile what attracted him was the smile number one the smile really caught his attention and the second thing is the dress that Mwansa was wearing it was a very very cute dress so here guys i've been telling you sometimes ladies send me their photos that they have uploaded on their profiles and you come to find that all the photos there is no smile and it is like <laughs> when a man looks at that photo he sees depression <laughs> you need to smile guys smile in the photos that you upload on your online dating profile because a smile is so powerful a smile gives a man power a smile gives a man positivity a smile gives a man to see light in you but if you don't smile they get depressed they see darkness yes guys this is the truth and some of us when we stay serious we don't look beautiful <laughs> So we should always try to smile. The smile caught this guy's attention and reached out to Mwansa though the guy was interested in women over 45 because the guy was in his 50s. So I think here you have learned something. So guys, they continued chatting and immediately Jan asked Mwansa if she has got Skype. And the reason why Jan asked about Skype is because he wanted to talk to Mwansa and also see her because in his past experience on the dating apps he was scammed before so he did not want to be scammed again so they did not chat a lot on that dating app and decided to start talking on skype she tells us that they used to talk on skype but not a video call no voice call because monster had a phone which was really disturbing her that phone was very very old i'm going to show the photo here because i asked her please show us that phone and she said she kept that phone because it's the same phone which she used to find her husband so she really treasures that phone so so much <laughs> so they could talk on skype and later on they decided to exchange phone numbers when Yan gained more confidence and trust in Mwansa. So friends, let's go back a bit to Mwansa's real life. At that time when she had just started chatting with Jan, the German guy, she was doing a cleaning job and she tells us it wasn't easy because the son was also still young so could take the son with her 
and put her down then start cleaning with the help of her younger sister so the place where she was working as a cleaner it was associated with the church so they could ask her lots of questions because they had seen her cv and told her why did you stop studying they explained and they were like we think you should finish your studies so they started paying her well she could pay school fees for her younger sister and take care of her son pay the rent she tells us that they were paying her three thousand kwacha i don't know in euros how much it will come i'll see and write it down there but the money was enough for her to pay school fees and take care of her small family so as she was cleaning yes she was chatting with this guy from germany that seemed serious but what she did she could also go to church go to the altar kneel down cry and talk to god tell god i want a muzungu husband please god help me she could also write letters prayer letters sometimes could go with her friend to the pastor to ask the pastor to pray for her and when the pastor could ask do you want me to pray for my daughter then she could be like i want a muzungu husband i must get married this year so the friend could be like you're embarrassing me what are you saying you're embarrassing me <laughs> yes i want a muzungu husband <laughs> <laughs> this lady was very very determined she wasn't shy at all <laughs> so people at the church used to laugh at her and some of them used to think she was crazy but later on they told her we really like your faith so back to young guys they kept on communicating on the phone every day they could talk the guy could share his daily activities and once or two could share her daily activities with yan when yan could say today i am going to see my mother at the hospital because he had a sick mother at the hospital could take photos send them to mwansa here is my mom i've been at the hospital then later i'll go visit my friend he could go to the friend and then take photos send them to Mwansa that this is my friend meet my friend that i told you i am going to visit he also told Mwansa about his life he had three sons and he was divorced another thing that he shared with Mwansa he was still paying the ex-wife you know they divorced and he was paying huge amount of money which he told Mwansa the amount this guy was so so honest i've been telling you dear beautiful ladies the reason why i give you these stories is for you to learn compare with your situation compare with the guy you are chatting with right now that you consider to be your boyfriend he is not supposed to hide anything from you a guy who really wants you a guy who is really interested in you he will want to come clear yes that is why he will share with you everything a guy who hides lots of things from you or when you ask questions he tells you are asking lots of questions he's not ready to open up run please dear beautiful ladies so they continued with their relationship growing stronger and he also introduced Mwansa to the son because later on Mwansa got an old laptop so they could talk using that old laptop and Mwansa could see the son that son was living with Yan so he could come and be like hello <laughs> yeah greet her this takes me again to you ladies you're chatting with guys they are divorced they have kids and then when it's weekend they're like i am with my daughter i am with my son i cannot talk to you it's a lie do not believe it because kids have got nothing to do with him communicating to you yes if he loves you if he's interested in you for real he's gonna talk to you no matter the kids are around or they are not around so they started chatting mid-september 2016 and january 2017 it was Moisa's birthday what yan did called Mwansa started singing for her she tells us that in her life no one has ever sung on her birthday also sent some gifts to her everything was super nice she really enjoyed that birthday so friends they kept on chatting every day and if you want to know if Yan ever asked for nude photos never he never talked of that he was very very respectful and decent never even said i love you he told her that he likes her if everything goes well 
when they meet he's gonna marry her <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's how a serious man should talk <laughs> you can't just be telling me show me your goodies then i'm going to marry you if you don't want to show me your goodies then it's over between us yes go to hell <laughs> if that's the case <laughs> and because i yeah. told you yan had divorced he was paying the ex-wife the payments was ending in 2017 march so they started talking of how to meet yan told mwansa that i cannot tell you i'm coming to meet you now because i have to first finish that payment to my ex-wife then after that i'll have some holidays in july so if i have to come i'll have to come in july she kept on praying and fasting for her relationship this teaches us don't forget god and think like everything is okay now i don't need god in my life no you will want god in your life forever so march came and he finished paying the ex-wife told mwansa i am done with the payment he was so so happy then june he told mwansa i have bought a ticket july i am coming to see you oh my god once i was so happy even yan was super super excited to go to zambia so before yan goes to zambia i know you want to know was he spoiling once <laughs> <laughs> yes I'm spoiling once i've told you he sent her a gift on her birthday and not only that sometimes he could send her some little money but whenever he could want to send once could be like no don't bother it's okay you know <laughs> it's not that she did not want that money she wanted it but you can't just be like okay send send no as a woman to look decent you have to be like no don't worry don't send don't bother but if a guy is serious and really cares about you he's gonna send even if you say don't worry it's okay i can manage i can handle <laughs> yeah so he could spoil her send her some money and you know things were going really really well so guys the day to travel to zambia meet mwansa came jan went and mwansa was at the airport waiting for him asked for permission from work it's good they allowed her guys i forgot to tell you later on mwansa got a very good job yes so they gave her permission to go pick yan at the airport and when yan arrived at the airport saw mwansa he started crying he cried a lot tears of happiness mwansa too started crying and she tells us that day is the day that she fell in love with him yes he also told her that he did not even start crying there he started crying when the plane landed oh my god love is really really beautiful this is so emotional guys <laughs> I'm getting emotional yeah because I try to imagine you know guys people suffer a lot in relationships and when they find love that is when you find yourself crying <laughs> yeah excuse me <laughs> so Ian's plan was to go to the hotel but Mwansa never wanted Ian to go to the hotel she wanted to see how it will be when they stay together you know in the home environment because he was supposed to stay for six weeks so Mwansa wanted him to see her real life never wanted to pretend to go meet him at the hotel no he said you will come here i have a big house we are going to stay here together so that is how it happened yan went to mwansa's house so guys i know you also want to know if yan brought gifts to mwansa and the kids yes yan brought lots of gifts for mwansa and for the kids he also brought her a very expensive phone that that phone mwansa kept it in the box for some days because she was so scared that it will break so this guy knew mwansa's life he had a very bad phone sometimes could send stupid things to him once i could explain that it's my phone my phone is not working well <laughs> that is why he brought her a very expensive phone the kids were very very happy night came and <laughs> here comes the good part guys <laughs> 
when I was chatting with Mwansa when we were talking about this story, actually guys, it took us so, so long because we first talk, then later on voice notes. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Mwansa. God bless you for sharing your story. So as we were talking, she was like, if you're scared to ask me if I share the goodies, girl, I share the goodies. <laughs> The first time when we met and it's because I was sure, a hundred percent sure that Jan is the one. That is why I gave him my goodies. <laughs> so guys, the second day when once I was going to work, Jan had read the whole environment, everything, the financial situation. <laughs> This is a responsible guy. <laughs> In Swahili, they say Kusoma Mazingira. So he read the environment and everything. Yeah. The second day when she was going to work, he gave Mwan some money and told her, go buy some things. <laughs> Mwan was like, no, don't worry. I will manage, you know, like always. <laughs> but eventually she took the money, went and bought some things that were missing, everything. Because she didn't have enough money, guys. She had just started working. <laughs> yeah. So she bought lots of things. And that weekend, Jan took Mwansa and the kids to the mall bought everything for the house you know shopping for the house Mwansa says that her house was empty <laughs> it was big and empty he bought everything guys for the house everything new <laughs> that is when your life changes like that so they bought those things and he paid with his card gave the card to Mwansa and told her go and pay she paid they went home the kids were happy too upgraded again guys when yan was in zambia mwansa's son got sick and was like don't worry go to work i'll be the one to take him to the doctor mwansa was like that day she really got so emotional remember he's not the father of the son but he's so kind and caring that he wants to take the responsibility take the kid to the doctor and that is what he did even the doctor later on when saw mwansa was like where did you find that white man you are so blessed so something so so good about yan he also went prepared with marriage documents <laughs> so that they can start the process because this guy had a plan i told you guys chat with men who have got plans this man knew i will pay my ex-wife when it ends i'll go to africa if i found the one then plan get married not a guy you're in a relationship he does not have a plan when you guys are getting married when you guys are meeting end it so friends his stay was really really good they enjoyed to an extent that when the holiday ended, he was supposed to return to Germany. He returned to Germany, but after six weeks, he was again in Zambia. <laughs> oh my God, I think Mwansa did a good job with this man. <laughs> <laughs> guys i want to advise you if you decide to give your goodies and you think the guy is the right man do it well oh because <laughs> you give him and give him and give him he will stay <laughs> if he's the right one by the way guys don't just give your goodies anyhow no guys no 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 <laughs> so guys when he arrived in zambia for the second time they had to talk to the kids in front of the kids tell them that i want to marry your mother <laughs> please give me the permission <laughs> and the kids were happy they accepted gave the blessings <laughs> then he proposed she was so so happy they were both happy he started crying it was so emotional and they enjoyed that whole day so friends before Jan returning to Germany asked Mwansa about her plan with her younger sister because the son there was no need of even asking of course if she gets married she has to move with the son but the younger sister what was going to happen so Jan asked her what do you think what do you want do you want to take her with you too 
Mwansa was a yes because I am her mother. I took care of her when I lost my mother when she was three years old. So I have to go with her to Germany <laughs> if you're going to get married. Then Jan was like, consider it done. Let us leave everything to the Germany authority. So the plan was Mwansa was supposed to get the custody of the son and with the younger sister, they were supposed to, to adopt her. So that is what they agreed on and time for Jan in Zambia ended. He had to return to Germany and when he arrived in Germany, started making for the process of the legal marriage. Then told Mwansa the date of the wedding, it was supposed to be in December. That same same year that Mwansa was like, I'm going to get married this year. God help me. <laughs> so the wedding was supposed to be in Germany, December 2017. So guys, when Mwansa got the date for the wedding, she had to call her auntie so that she can stay with the kids while she's away because she couldn't get all the documents of the kids to travel with them. Though Jan thought that she was going with the kids. So she went to Germany for the first time for the wedding. <laughs> oh my God, God is good. And when she arrived, met Jan's sons, they were so happy to see her. They hugged her so tightly, like they had known her forever because they used to talk to her in a long distance, you know? Now they meet her in person. Everything was super, super good. She arrived on Sunday and on Monday, they got married, guys. So guys, after marriage, everything was super good. She stayed for three weeks, but those three weeks she really, really enjoyed, you know? <laughs> a new couple married couple <laughs> but another important thing that Ian did made her a signatory so he gave her his bank card to use too told her that my money is your money too it's our money now oh my god this is so good when you get a genuine man he will never treat you like a stranger you will be one one body <laughs> Yes, and guys, because she had gone on a tourist visa, three weeks ended and she had to return to Zambia. Prepare herself and the kids then come together to live in Germany with the husband. She tells us that he paid for her business class both going to germany and returning to zambia oh my god <laughs> imagine guys where she came from god is really faithful so dear friends once i returned to zambia as a married woman <laughs> God is good. He made it possible for her. Yeah, after returning to Zambia the following year, which was 2018, all the documents of the kids were ready. Then they came together, three of them, to join Jan, you know, as the whole family. They reunited and same, same year, they did another wedding, which was a church wedding. It was her wish to do a church wedding. The sons were there. Everyone was there, guys guys from the side of Jan, even Jan's mother. They did the wedding near the hospital where Jan's mother was staying, so she came to the wedding. Also Mwansa's friends and that friend from the Netherlands, whereby they've been friends for 13 years, who introduced her to the dating apps, was there at the wedding. Everyone was so, so happy, guys. So we come to the big question, guys. Which kind of a dating app did Mwansa meet Yan? She met him on Afro Introductions. Guys, I've been telling you Afro Introductions is the best because we have got lots lots of success stories about afro introductions please be patient you will find the one try that site out if you decide to send five messages a day it's okay but keep giving it a try so dear friends that is how Mwansa met her husband on afro introduction her story is so so beautiful it is so so emotional and once again girl thank you so much for sharing your story it was really of a help because i know it will help much ladies out there to be inspired and raise their faith my advice to all single mothers out there you are a single mom of one of two of three please remove that fear voice that is telling you you won't find the one because you are a single mother let's say of three kids when a man falls in love with you he will love you for who you are 
and your kids that won't be a problem those who are running because you are a single mother it's because they are not serious so stop hearing that fear voice and move forward so dear friends i want to say thank you so much if you're watching till now god bless you i love you so much guys you're always here in my heart let us meet in my next video Ciao, ciao.